Hi, you guys. I'm Dr. Ashley Torchio, owner, operator, COO, and co-founder of Pangea Chiropractic. Today, we are talking all about dairy. So if you've been tuning into our 12-part nutritional series, then today, dairy is our topic. So this topic is all over the board. Is dairy good for you? Is it bad for you? Is it causing other health issues for you? The answer is maybe. So conventional dairy is a huge contributor to the inflammatory process that exists in our body today. If you are consuming conventional dairy, it's also going to be one of the biggest mucus producers that your body can actually consume and take in that's going to increase that mucus production. We have been told over and over and over that this, these dairy products are going to give us strong bones and that this yogurt that we're eating is going to give us healthy probiotics. But realistically, these claims don't stand up to scientific scrutiny. There's really no research that's shown that conventional dairy can actually increase bone density. Um, however, increased exercise, increased fruits, vegetables, and meat, uh, these are all things that have been shown to increase bone density. So what we need to know is that people in other countries with high calcium intake um, from commodities such as dairy products, they actually have the highest incidence of bone, uh, bone and hip fractures that there are. The billions of people on the planet who do not consume dairy products actually have fewer incidences of osteoporosis overall. So here's what we need to know is that not all dairy is created equal. I'm saying if you can find a source of dairy that is from a local farmer, it's whole milk, it's grass-fed, grass-finished by cows that has not been homogenized, now you're going to get one of the highest sources of protein you can possibly find. The fat in that milk is going to be punched and packed, loaded of vitamins and minerals that are vital for the body that we can actually use. So I don't want to villainize all dairy because it's not all created equal. If you can find that local farmer, it's going to be the way to go. The last thing I want to say about dairy is that it is one of the most common food sensitivities that we see within our office, along with gluten and wheat and eggs. Uh, dairy is by far one of the most common food sensitivities that we see on a regular basis, causing gut irregularity and gut issues. So if that's the case for you, then you really want to go an alternative route to dairy in general. So what you could do for an alternative is you could go with a sheep dairy. Um, you could do sheep or goat milk. Uh, goat milk is the closest thing to uh, human milk that you can possibly find. If you don't want to go that route, and same thing with those, don't forget, you got to find a local farmer that's not going to homogenize it and not going to break down those proteins and make it an inusable source. Um, if you want a different alternative, you can go with macadamia nut milk, which is probably one of the harder ones to find, or you can go with something that is everywhere like a coconut milk. These are going to be your best dairy alternatives. I'm going to tell you right now to please steer clear of oat milk, of almond milk, um, these can also wreak havoc in the system for other issues. That's a whole nother video. So like I said, go straight from the source, get grass fed, grass finished, local farmer, whole full fat as you can get. And it's going to be a way to go. If you don't want to do that, look for a sheep, look for a goat milk, also local. And if that's not the way to go, then going with a macadamia or a coconut milk is going to be the best route for something alternative in your diet. I hope this dairy conversation helps a little bit. I know it can be confusing to weave through all of that information. You have to do what's right for you. But I will tell you right now, if you're going to stick with conventional dairy products, it will be an issue long term. Thank you.